Uh, so, at the outset, let me thank our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor K.R.S. Sambasiva Rao, uh, and uh, all these webinar series actually from uh, his insistence and this is for the benefit of all students, in particularly in this lockdown period, where who are uh, staying back at home. Uh, so I hope all of them will get benefited. And uh, I also thank uh, the our uh, computer ICT center, who is providing all the support. And uh, uh, let me introduce our speaker today, Professor Saul Lavigda. Uh, he has, uh, you know, range of degrees. I think double BA, MA, MS, and PhD, and PhD. And uh, he did his uh, uh, degrees, received his degrees in Hungary in uh, mathematics and physics. Thereafter, he moved to Cincinnati, Ohio, USA, for his post postgraduate studies in applied mathematics. So there, while teaching, he got interested in uh, issues related to mathematics education. Particularly, uh, he focused on uh, use of technology in mathematics education. And uh, thereafter, he was in uh, uh, Cambridge as well as uh, uh, University of Michigan, where he uh, carried out many research projects and uh, related to technology and teaching and learning of mathematics. And uh, then uh, he was a core member of the GeoGebra community, GeoGebra developers, and the uh, people, the participants who are hearing GeoGebra for the first time, let me mention, GeoGebra is an open source software. It's a dynamical software, and uh, it is uh, designed so that people can use, teachers and students can use, and they can visualize difficult concepts which are otherwise difficult to you know uh, appreciate and understand in, in in the classroom and over the years geogebra has expanded with many dimensions so our speaker will come to all these details i think and uh, today he will uh, uh, introduce some ideas and examples of technological pedagogical and you know uh, policy innovations uh, particularly involving uh, STEM to STEAM transition, and also talk about GeoGebra. And uh, by the way, we also had GeoGebra, you know, institute in Mizoram University, and we carried out many training programs. People benefited, and then some of my students also completed PhD thesis on this successfully. So I'm really happy, and I look forward to you know future collaborations and carry forward the research in this regard. So with these words, I welcome all the participants, my colleagues, friends, and students, ladies and gentlemen. Now over to Professor uh, Saul Lavigda, uh, who is currently Professor of STEM Education in Linz Education uh, uh, in the University of jo Johann Kepler University, Austria. So welcome, and over to you, Professor uh, Saul Lavigda. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> so thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy to, to be here. So I just start my screen uh, sharing to, to show some of the, the ideas then, then, that, um, then that I want to outline uh, today. And uh, I think it should work now. Yeah, OK. OK. So thank you again for the invitation, and uh, I'm very happy to to see you again. So in the in the the past years, we didn't really meet too much, um, but um, it it would be very nice to 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 refresh the, the these connections. And uh, also, uh, I remember I was in India some years ago, and then it's it's really fascinating. So. Uh, I'm very happy to to talk with you, and then maybe we can develop some collaboration in the in the future. And essentially, this is what I would like to to do. So I'm I'm not talking about one topic, but more about 
many different kind of topics then then that could encourage you to 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 participate in in uh, in our work and then i also i will uh, talk about um, my my students work so i'm i'm coordinating the the doctoral school in in, in linz and then the students who are doing the, the, the work. And then may, maybe I can encourage uh, you to, to study uh, mathematics and then study STEAM mm -hmm. education. And, uh, and then may, maybe join the, the GeoGebra community and, uh, and our work in, in Linz. So essentially, I would like to, to talk about uh, five topics that uh, one, what we are doing uh, with GeoGebra and the doctoral school, what kind of research what uh, we do. And I talk about STEAM education because I think STEAM education is uh, is really the, the future. So many countries are taking the, in these approaches, but um, but in the in the, the future, I think they, this is the direction where where we should go, and then we should um, we, we should develop the, in these kind of uh, ideas. So first of all, I talk about uh, one what I do currently. So as uh, as Jamal um, uh, explained, then then that uh, I was working in in uh, Cambridge, but now I'm I'm heading the doctoral school and uh, the research program in um, in Linz in uh, Johannes Kepler University, and then that is a very interesting place to to do research. So one what I'm doing is uh, that we have a, a doctoral program on STEAM education. And uh, we have more than 35, 40 PhD students from all over the world. So we have students from at least 25 countries, but we want to involve students and, 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 uh, and researchers from all over the world. So we want to have at least 60 PhD students working on the, these kind of topics. And then we organize lots of conferences, webinars, and, uh, and, and so on. So then these are the activities one what we are doing. And this doctoral program is based on, on my previous work in, in, in Cambridge. And then what we do is we are giving research training for, um, for students and for, for colleagues, and then improve the, the methodology that how we can explore STEAM education from different uh, perspectives. So if you like what, what we do, then I'm sure there is a, a possibility to, to join us uh, either a researcher or a student or uh, or doing some projects together so just keep in mind then that uh, we, we are very happy to to collaborate and then also uh, our program is or our uh, school is developing geogebra as uh, jamal um, uh, explained that geogebra is an open source mathematics software in which was originally developed by uh, professor marcus hohenwater in, uh, in 2001 as his, uh, as his master's thesis, because he, won, he wanted to write a thesis for more both mathematics and, um, and computer science. And then it was the, the connection of, of dynamic geometry and computer algebra to use it in, in school. And then this is, an, this is an open source project. So people started to be participating programming, contributing for different things. So now GeoGebra is a, is a very extensive tool from covering all parts of mathematics and, and, and science and being used in, in many different ways. And then there is also a, a management, a classroom management program and, and so on. So I will talk about all of the, in these kind of activities when what we are doing in, uh, in, in GeoGebra. And since GeoGebra is open source, so it's free for all teachers and students. So there are more than 100 million students and teachers are using it all around the world. And then there are millions of, of uh, people joining it. And then you can access for, um, for all different kinds of activities. And then you are very welcome to download the apps or, or, the, uh, or using it uh, online. And also, one what we developed initially, that GeoGebra was a tool for secondary schools, but essentially now it's used from primary school to university, and then also in many different kinds of subjects. In, um, in, um, 
in, in mathematics, physics, biology, architecture, and in, in many different kinds of uh, ways, uh, GeoGebra is being used. And also, because it's an, it's an open source uh, project, uh, what we want from the, the community that, um, that people are in, the, in this community to share their resources. So there are more than 2 million resources. Everything is, is free and then accessible. So instead of paying for GeoGebra, what we would like to ask is develop this community and share all of these resources with each other. So please look at that what is available and then use all of these resources. Everything is downloadable and then suitable for your studies, for teaching, for research, and, and, and so on. So then that is very important. But also the communities is very important. We, we have uh, more than 200 GeoGebra Institute, and then your institution has, uh, has one of the, the GeoGebra Institute in, in India. So we have lots of enthusiastic people working on GeoGebra, on, on developing resources and teaching and, and materials. So you can be part of the, this kind of community. There is a, a GeoGebra Facebook page, uh, Twitter, and then I will show you later our STEAM resources. So we, we are sharing all of these ideas to encourage um, participation in, the, in this community. So the, this is the, the community and, uh, and we are working uh, on, on this. So I'm leading the, the research on, uh, on different aspects of, um, of uh, innovations and, and creativities. So essentially when, what we are trying to do that to support students and teachers to reintroduce creativity and innovation into, into their uh, work. So men, many of the, 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 the teaching and learning of mathematics is just so, uh, solving uh, problems very boring and then, then, then so on. But one, what we need in the 21st century is, is really creative approaches for, um, for mathematics and, and, um, and, and science and, and teaching as well. So one, what kind of creativities we, we, can, we can talk about it. Uh, so creativity is, uh, is, is very important, but it's very difficult to, to define. So everyone has some kind of creativity. It's not, not necessarily that uh, someone has one kind, of, uh, one kind of creativity, but there are many different ways to define creativities. And as a student and as a teacher, you can find your own creativity. And then what we try to do is, is doing support for uh, reintroducing the, in this creativity into, into, the, into the classroom and into, into teaching of, uh, of mathematics and, and science and then STEAM subjects. So we, we try to define creativity and then also what kind of creativities uh, there are. There are personal creativities, uh, general creativities and, and so on. And then what we try to, to do is that re reintroducing the, these kind of creativities and then helping students and teachers to, to detect one what is creativity, to measure creativity, and then also reintroduce this creativity into, into their work, both teaching, research, uh, uh, learning, and then also in pedagogy and in, in many, many different ways as well. So our work is mostly to help uh, the, in these kind of creativities for education. So probably you heard about Finland, so we work a lot with my colleagues in, in Finland because it's a, it's a very interesting uh, place in which is experimenting the, in this um, interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary way of creative education. And the same, it is happening in, in many other places in the, in the world. So for example, Korea is introducing STEAM education to boost creativity because then, then that is what we need for our future work, not just the rote learning and then doing well in the test, because both Finland and Korea are doing very well in, in PISA and in other tests, but they realize that only with, uh, with creative approaches, we can um, develop skills for the 21st century 
for for doing these uh, activities. And then one what is really needed this kind of transdisciplinary approach. So we don't only learn mathematics, but we learn mathematics for working together for physics and biology and even uh, literature and then other subjects. So we try to create an environment which connects all the, the subjects. We, we look at projects that how we can go to Mars, then we not only need one subject, but we need all of them, the subject, and then try to, to create in this kind of creativities uh, for, for education. So our goal with GeoGebra and then our research group in Linz to, to create technologies in which support uh, pedagogies, policies, and then create the conditions for doing this kind of reintroduction of creativity into, into education. And then we are doing research. So I would like to show you some of these examples that one, what kind of innovations and, and, and technologies uh, we are uh, developing in, in relation to, to, these, uh, to these technologies. And um, I will show you some of the technological innovation then that we are involved. So GeoGebra, is, uh, is available on all uh, platforms. So you can download, you can use, and then, then, then work on this. But when, what we observe that um, many times it's not the availability of technology because in the, in the past, we had the problem that students and teachers didn't have the, the computer labs and, and so on. But um, one, what we have now is that uh, most of the students have smartphones, so we can use them, the smartphones in the, the classroom and then we can, we can introduce lots of creative ways for, for teaching and, and, and learning. And uh, this is one what we try to encourage to, to develop resources for uh, smartphones and these kind of technologies. And then also, you know, lots of social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram and, and so on. So we, we try to involve in this kind of new social media and the new media into, into education. So we created the GeoGebra platform as, a, as more like a, a social media platform that you can uh, follow your teachers and then each other and then share the, these ideas and then work together on these uh, shared uh, places on the, the GeoGebra platform. So the, this is available for, for teachers and students to, to work on this. And then also when we try to look at that, how we can recreate um, uh, online teaching and then also the teaching with technology. So until now we were very rely, reliant on, uh, on textbooks, but why do we need uh, only one textbook for all the, the students when technology essentially for free can create textbooks. So all teachers and all students will be able to um, create their own textbook. So if a teacher create their own textbook for their own uh, students and then students can create their own textbooks on the, on the thing. So we are trying to look at research at how we can reimagine textbooks, not, not only in the um, for and for the donation, but also personalize these kind of textbooks. So then there is GeoGebra books, which is available. And then there are already tens of thousands of, of GeoGebra books. And then you can create your own and then share with the community. And then you can create uh, your own textbooks as well. And then also we are uh, working on online collaboration. So there is a new tool called GeoGebra Classroom where you can create a classroom environment and then the teachers can follow the, the, the work of the, of the students. And then also it's a, it's a very good way to, to collaborate among each other. So it just released last week. So you will be able to, to look at that, how you can create the, these uh, features. So the, this is a, a kind of um, new, way that in integrating the different kind of pedagogies into, into, the, into the classroom. And then you will be able to, to, to look at that one what, is, um, one what is happening. Okay, so also one what we are uh, preparing is, a, is a, a virtual learning environment. 
and then you will be able to create your own um, uh, working group or, or teachers can, can create their, their own um, classrooms. So then this is a basic learning management system then, then that you will be able to, 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 to create for your, for your students and then for your uh, teachers. And then also GeoGebra is including lots of tools. So many times, especially in universities, we need to, to do proofs but there is an, a new way to, to do proof. So there is an automatic reasoning tool built in GeoGebra. So you can test your conjectures and then there are some automatic um, computer-based Um, hello okay so when what you can do that you can take your phone and then for example if you want to measure gravity you can just turn on the, the sensors and then you can throw these uh, uh, mobile phone and then collect your your data and then you can uh, capture all different kind of data in the in the in your phone or just walk around and then do this kind of environment and then you will be able to uh, collect data and analyze data in, in, this, uh, in this environment. The, the other thing is then that um, now you can use GeoGebra in, uh, in exams. So there is an exam board in, in GeoGebra. So, Many times uh, schools and universities require uh, calculators, but now you can turn GeoGebra into a calculator and then this could be a custom calculator. And there is also an exam mode in which you can use in, in, uh, in, in tests. So it's, uh, it's very secure, it's only GeoGebra running and uh, you can test it and then the, the teachers can follow. So in then that case, instead of buying an expensive calculator, then you can use GeoGebra for exams. And then we are experimenting with these GeoGebra exams in many different places. For example, in New York, we have uh, thousands of students taking state exams with, with GeoGebra instead of uh, calculators. And there are many countries in which are introducing um, exams for uh, with, with technology and then using GeoGebra. And then you can have lots of different kind of apps with, with GeoGebra and, uh, and then use the, these apps for, um, for, your, for your mobile phone. Then the new development of, of GeoGebra is, uh, is augmented reality. It's also available on phones and then tablets. And then you can place different objects within augmented reality in the, in the space. And then also when, what you can do, you can do modeling with, um, with this environment. So for example, hopefully the, the video is, uh, is starting, then that you can just walk around in your, in your surroundings. And, uh, and then you can do the, this kind of modeling with, uh, with, with augmented uh, reality. So hopefully this video will restart. Maybe the internet is, uh, is a little bit um, uh, slow. But um, so for example, if you take a, a lamp, then you can just use your phone to, to build the, the function of a lamp. And then you will be able to model this lamp with augmented reality. And then also I will show you soon then that you can do 3D modeling with this. So instead of just solving equations on, on paper, then you will be able to 
do the, in this kind of modeling in, uh, in GeoGebra and then place these objects all around you and, uh, and do the, the, the modeling. So there are already hundreds of examples in which is created by GeoGebra and then you can walk around in your surroundings and, uh, and explore mathematics in the GeoGebra with augmented reality. So um, I will show some examples later, but also what we try to do is that GeoGebra is now um, connected with, um, with uh, 3D printing. So we work with, with many different kinds of 3D printers. And then we are trying to, to use the, in this uh, 3D printing in, uh, in our environment. So the, these are my students experimenting, creating games and then different mathematical objects. So you can go model and then uh, and print all of these activities. And then also we, we try to involve artists. So mathematics and art is a, is a very important part. So we can do 3D printing and, and art. And I will show many of these examples later. So for example, in, uh, in during the the, the coronavirus uh, pandemic, my student Ben in Luxembourg created uh, a competition with GeoGebra and 3D printing. And then students created um, Easter eggs and then created these kind of 3D printing images. And these, these students are uh, first grade and then uh, primary school students creating these really interesting objects with learning lots of different kinds of mathematics. And now they are working on, on virtual uh, robots and then virtual assistants in, the, in this uh, kind of work. So Ben and Eve is, uh, is very innovative in this uh, 3D uh, printing um, uh, work. But I, I will show you some more that how we can connect uh, physical and digital works, but also as I mentioned, there are uh, millions of resources available on the web. So you can find all of them, the things. But one of my students, uh, Barbara, who just graduated with her PhD, looked at that how we can find good quality resources, that one, what kind of resources you need uh, for, your, for your work. So you can find all of these resources and then we try to, to give the best resources for, um, for the, the students. But to give the, the best resources and then also to detect creativity, my student in, in Israel trying to look at that how we can measure creativity from, from data sources. So finding creative students in the, in the classroom is, is very difficult because we need to have tests. And then many times creative students are not the high achievers because they are thinking differently. But if we can use GeoGebra to stream data and then use data from different solutions within GeoGebra, then we can uh, use machine learning algorithms to, to notify the teachers that something very interesting is happening with uh, the students and then using this kind of AI and machine learning to, to support teachers and then support the, the students that uh, to, to do creative activities in, the, in their classrooms as well. So when we try to, to use and in this kind of big data activities in the, in the, the work, but we are const, constantly uh, developing GeoGebra and to, to support different uh, activities. So we do uh, user experience research, and then now we have a big team. So if you are working on computer science and and, um, and user experience, then we will have some uh, jobs as well that, that is available for, for students to, to work on improving uh, GeoGebra. And then also there are some new features like the, the GeoGebra probe, uh, math solver. We are working with PhotoMath that you can take uh, pictures and then you can solve equations and then give them the whole solution. Dean, this is a very interesting um, feature of GeoGebra. So it's GeoGebra notes. So you can use GeoGebra as a, as a whiteboard. So you can write equations, it, it uh, recognizes equation, and then you can create a whole classroom environment 
within this GeoGebra nodes environment with, uh, with writing recognition and, and so on. And then also, then there is a, a map of materials in which we try to develop for mathematics and physics and all different sciences to, to give the best resources for students. So if you go to the GeoGebra website, then you will be able to find uh, lots of these resources in a, in a map. So Dean, these, these are some of the, the technological innovations, but we are doing many, many other things. So then let's just look at that, what kind of pedagogical innovations we need to enhance creativity in the, in the, in the classroom. So now we have technology, but doing mathematics or doing science in, in a digital environment requires different kind of thinking. And then my student edit is looking at functional misconceptions that whole students are solving uh, mathematical problems in different kind of environments. So we need to, to design different kind of tasks and activities in the, in the classroom. And then also one what is very important that using technology allow us to, to include gamification. So using uh, games and, and, um, and different activities for, um, uh, for, for teaching mathematics or even teach, uh, training teachers is very important. So we are getting uh, gamification everywhere. So if you buy something online, you get stars and then you get coupons. And then if you play games, then you are in the leaderboard. So we, we try to create a gamification environment. So probably you know many times that points, levels, leaderboards, badges, avatars is, is given. And then what we try to do within GeoGebra to be able to um, develop um, a gamification editor that every teacher and every student can create their own uh, gamified environment and encourage students in the, in, the, in the classroom. So two of my PhD students are working on this gamification and then try to create in this kind of gam gamified environment for students. And also a very important pedagogical innovation is split classroom. That why do we need to teach content in the, in the, in the classroom when when there is a technology available, all the resources are available. So students can prepare solving problems before the class and then using the class time for, um, for more discussion and exploration and, and discoveries in this kind of classroom. But we can use this flip classroom complementing with uh, augmented reality, with 3D printing. And then we have these uh, inquiry-based learning or project-based learning that students are getting projects, just walk around in their cities or in their classrooms to, to create the, in these environments and then use this for, for exploration. Or one what we can do is that um, we, we can have, uh, for example, architecture as, a, as, a, as an inspiration to learning mathematics. So my student, Shireen from, um, from Egypt is looking at architecture to teach mathematics. So you can use 3D printing and, and uh, AR and GeoGebra just to, to walk around and then explore architecture and art around you and then use in this kind of transformation from, from digital to the physical world to, to learn. And then students are learning much more than just solving equations in, in different uh, classrooms. But one, one what we try to do most of the time is that how we can connect the, the physical and, and the digital world. So we have um, uh, problems in the man mathematical problems, and then we can turn it into, into digital problems in, in GeoGebra. And then also we can use augmented reality, and then we can go back with the 3D printing and, and so on. So when, what we try to do is developing games and puzzles. So we first saw that students like to, to play games and then puzzles, and then it, it happens many times, but it turns out that creating their own games is, is even more interesting. So we are creating many different kinds of games and then encourage students to do these games. So we, we have to in these kind of environments when students are creating their own games and then so on. 
So for example, uh, we, we worked with the students and then they created some digital games in, in GeoGebra. But if we use their own pictures, then, then we can expand the, these games for their own work. And then they started to model uh, exercises. And then we started to do then the, these kind of new games into, into 3D printing and then uh, altered in these kind of games. And then we, we can turn the, the classroom to this continuous innovation of games and and then working between the physical and the, and the digital world in these uh, in these environments. So then this is this is very interesting and students are very uh, creative and then we can have manipulatives in which we use in, in schools, but we can create a new era of manipulatives by these. Um, by these different exercises with, uh, with the new technology. So it, it could be digital and physical all the time. So for example, it's, a, it's an example by uh, one of my students that students are taking a picture of their faces and then we can rotate it in, in GeoGebra and then you create a vase and then you can print the, in this vase, which is uh, your face in, the, in this vase and then also if you put some salt or, or sand into this, this ways, then um, you can measure the volume of the, the face. And then we can go from many different kinds of directions from this. And then students really want to, to work on, on these kind of things because they learn lots of mathematics through these games. Or there is a very simple example, the dividing the cube into equal parts, that we, we can divide the cube into equal parts into infinite many ways and then um, we have a big competition so students are generating thousands of solutions on paper on GeoGebra, in 3d printing or or in in, in, in many um, other other aspects and uh, and then we can, we can go further so we can we can include arts in the in these kind of activities so for example dividing spirals dividing uh, 3D spirals and then uh, tiling the, and then the space that is a possibility. So it's all the students' work in which they are creating by allowing them to, to have the, in this kind of environment and then create the, in this kind of activities for them. But also we can use it in, uh, in teaching. So we can connect the physical and digital world. So for example, using these printed materials for, for training and then teaching geometry from, um, from these different perspectives and then using them in this kind of environment to, to encourage more creative approaches for uh, <clears throat> teachers and students. But also some of the students are working with, um, <clears throat> with um, uh, blind students. So then there is a uh, lot lots of equality so then what we can do is then, then that we are creating um, uh, activities for blind students so eva my, my student is, is working on, on on activities so for example we can create pictures in um, in GeoGebra and then we can turn it into a 3d print so blind students can touch the pictures and then they feel that how, how it is working or also one what we had is a is a project in uh, in Montenegro in a small country in southern Europe. Then that we we, we tried to connect in this physical and digital world, and then we trained hundreds of teachers to to use GeoGebra and three D printing and uh, and augmented reality to to use in this kind of activities in the in the in the in the classroom, and uh, for example. Uh, repairing some of the, the machines and then personalize some of the of the mathematical uh, approaches. But also, one what we also do that we we look at lots of games. So we can we can turn the, these games into into activities in the classroom. So my other student Eduardo is is looking at that how we can turn board games into games for the classroom. Turn the entire classroom and the school or the city into a game and then how we can learn mathematics uh, through the, in this activity. Or Natalia is working on origami. So origami is, a, is really a mathematical 
uh, approach and then we, we can turn origami into mathematics or and then there is mathematics and programming so students are working on on augmented reality and uh, and and origami so they, they just use in these these activities and then we can turn origami into to coding so I mean, we can start to to produce this dragon curve and then we can use scratch and GeoGebra to to promote um, coding and programming in, the, in these activities. So origami and then augmented reality. And then also we can connect sustainable development uh, with, with these activities as well. But what we can also do is, uh, is, uh, is dancing. So mathematics and dancing and coding is, is very much related. And then we, we can do many of these activities. And then also it's, uh, we can empower girls to be part of the of uh, of mathematics, and um, and then we can create mathematical arts, in which is um, in which is a very important part of what what we can do. Or um, my other PhD student is working on silent videos, that instead of just giving an example, the students creating a very short video, half minute or one minute, and then they exchange it with each other, and then they have to. Uh, to have a voiceover for these uh, for these activities. So essentially, students are becoming YouTubers in the the classroom to explain mathematics with the, of these videos, and this this could create a, a very innovative environment that students are critiquing each other's videos and then and then working with, with each other. So I have uh, lots of these examples. So it's all of my student work. But also what we can use is, uh, is mathematical memes. Many of us are, are meeting the, these memes all the time. And then we can really teach mathematics with these memes. So Julia in Italy is working on these memes to, to teach mathematics. And then students are creating uh, thousands and, and, um, and uh, of these memes and then sharing with each other. And then they are learning mathematics uh, with, uh, with these mathematical memes to, to, to show it. So it, it spreads beyond the, the, the classroom. And it's, a, it's a very important then that we use the, in these uh, research methods in the, in the classroom. But also we can uh, work with talented students that how we can use the, in this, uh, these talents in the, in, the, in, the, in the classroom to, to support teachers. So man, one of my PSC students is working on that why talented students have to wait a lot in the, in the classroom and, uh, and then how we can help them with this kind of project learning to, to create these activities to, to avoid waiting and then being bored in the, in the, in the classroom. So, um, Robotics. So uh, there are now very cheap robots. In, uh, for example, we work with 4D frame, which is a, uh, uh, which is a very simple. It's like uh, straws. You you can create in these kind of robots or drones, and then students are building their own uh, robots connected with with, with GeoGebra, and then, and then uh, we are doing competitions on these uh, on the on these robots. And then students are learning lot, lots of these kind of activities, or we can use drones for mathematical modeling. And then the students are, are very encouraged and then they don't really want to, to go home. So it's, uh, it's built in a very cheap materials. It's just some dollars and then it, 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 it could, be, could be done in the, in the classroom. So we, we, we try to, to look at that how we can connect mathematics, robotics, coding, and, uh, and in this modeling in the classroom. Or uh, Lajos, my other student, who is um, developing music and mathematics. So we have a new app when uh, students are learning composing music and then learn mathematics and equations in, the, in this kind of music uh, equations. Or, deliberate practice by Clements. And then also, then there are lots of possibilities. So big data and then visualization of, uh, of statistics is becoming very important. Same with sustainable development. 
So my PhD student who is going to graduate in two weeks is working on this um, OEC or uh, World Bank uh, donut model that we can take, take data from uh, different resources on the internet and then we are analyzing it with, um, with GeoGebra for students to, to, to evaluate the, the cause of different countries for sustainable development and then cities as well. So then there are, there are many different kinds of activities. So for example, our, um, uh, my student in uh, Finland is developing new classroom environment that how we can make students happy. So all of this equipment Yuka created with his, uh, with his students, that all these materials is, is, um, is earned by students. And then, then they are creating a new learning environment that making students happy. And then we use some sensors to evaluate their, their well-being in the, the classroom. Or there is a, another colleague in, in um, Argentina who is running a competition on photogebra. So students are submitting um, uh, pictures. So you can find all of these materials and then you can create it and then explore mathematics by taking photos of uh, in the school, in the city, or, or in, the, in this environment. So this is a very powerful tool to, to learn mathematics. And then also my colleague, Barbara Sabitzer, is looking at the cool lab that how we can promote computational thinking for, um, for students and then work on this cool idea that how we can use need this kind of uh, coding and then and the future of, uh, of the, this integration of computer science and mathematics into, into education. Okay, so probably I will skip some of the, the, the things in which, uh, the, which related to policy and then I will just talk, I don't know how much time I have, but I, I can uh, talk a little bit of STEAM education, but one, what I mean on STEAM education and give you some examples and then some more examples that what else we are doing. So for example, STEAM education is including arts as a creativity in the, the work. So we try to connect these physical and digital experiences. So um, my colleague, Christoph Fenves in, in, in Finland and uh, Diego in, in Brazil is working on, for example, a, a, a geodesic dome. So we use these uh, materials, very cheap materials to, to build geodesic domes, which is, um, which is a, a very well-known architectural construct. So students are working together to build this dome, which is a very complex activity. It takes several hours to, to build this dome and then the students have to work in teams. So five teams of five students to, to build this uh, geometric, um, uh, um, uh, construction and and then when when they have some inspiration then we can explore all of these activities within GeoGebra so you can explore the, the mathematics the angles the, the the different shapes the the symmetries and then all all of them then the parts for um, for this construction and then we can identify some of them the, the patterns and uh, symmetries and then so on. So we can use this geodesic dome activity essentially for a semester, for a whole year to explore different parts of mathematical ideas and, uh, and connect algebra, geometry, functions, and then so on. But for example, in Finland, uh, my colleagues uh, developed uh, a new project. So they built the, the world's largest geodesic dome from ice. So probably in India that ice is not too common, but, uh, but you can build this ice dome and then thousands of students were, were part of the, the, the building. And then it become like a national project to, to, to create the, this, uh, this dome. And there were lots of activities. And then when students went back to the classroom, they looked at that where this geodesic dome um, can be found in the, the world. So it can be found in Disneyland, in, in the North Pole. You can have it in, in, um, in origami, but you can go to more extreme that you can have a, a mathematical hairdresser and then you can have your 
own geodesic dome in your in your head. So we are we are doing the, these activities. So then, then this, this could be the, the kind of activities that students explore and then 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 work on. Or we can use examples. So for example, Diego is looking at Leonardo da Vinci's book. And then together with the students, we are recreating Leonardo's work in, in physical and then in digital world and in 3D printing and, and so on. So students are building, for example, this, um, this uh, bridge from Leonardo's work uh, in, uh, in GeoGebra and then also in um, uh, from from wood. So I think my internet is a little bit slow. So you can you need different kind of skills and different kind of mathematics. So it's a very rich activity then that, that you can you can explore within GeoGebra or you can build a catapult. So you can build a catapult in the in the school from wood and then you can turn it into into a GeoGebra catapult. And uh, and it, it creates an environment which is really exciting and uh, and uh, and creative uh, for the for the students. So hopefully it will start, and then you have some impression that one what is this? So it's an ori originally designed by uh, by Leonardo da Vinci. But of course, you need to be careful with the window of the, the, the school. And then you can do all of these activities within GeoGebra and, and in 4D frame as well. So it's, uh, it's a bit slow, but then um, this is a possibility to, to do within this, this kind of modeling of uh, physical and digital resources. And then it's, it's becoming very powerful for, for all of this, this work. Okay, so then this is STEAM education, and then I will show you some of the projects when what we are also involved. So, which might be very in interesting for you, that um, then that we are work working on mathematical arts. So, for example, mandalas are part of all uh, all cultures. So we are running workshops on on mandalas, and then we are creating uh, drawing. And uh, and uh, and mandalas from hand, and then also we are creating these vegetable mandalas, and then we can eat mathematics together with uh, the students, and then do it in this kind of modeling. So every culture has some kind of symmetries, and then we can explore all of these mathematics in a physical world and digital world, and it really uh, encourage students and teachers to be part of this and then explore the, the mathematics around them. So then this is a very important field to, to include then the, the culture and the arts with, which is surrounding us. And then we, we can do very well just to, 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 to see that one, what is available in, in our places or in our, our cities as well. And um, also, we look at um, uh, children's art. So then, this is a this is a mathematics uh, competition in in the in the, um, the suburbs or in South Africa. So very poor students creating these these mathematical arts who are are very poor, and then they they can show lots of mathematical arts, and then then the teachers are are very surprised. Then that how much uh, mathematics they they already know from uh, from a very poor uh, perspective, and then we are trying to to assist them to to work on this mathematical arts win, which gives lots of um, encouragement and and reasoning for the students. Or one what we can do, we can work with uh, with mathematics and music, so very cheap equipment like Raspberry Pi. Uh, we we can compose music. And then using the, the, the music composition, students are learning mathematics and, and coding. And then we can just uh, using mathematics as a, as a DJing equipment in, the, in this work. But also we can use dancing with mathematics. So then there are lots of activities when movement and dancing is, is, uh, is connecting the, the mathematics as well. 
And then also we are working with the Ars Electronica Festival. I mean, we create uh, many workshops for students. I don't have um, time to, to show it. And then also we uh, organize conferences. All of our conferences are online. So you are very welcome to, to participate. I will share the, the resources. We do workshops in all around the world. For example, in the Mathematical Museum in New York, we, we give a talk and we organize mathematical art um, conferences. So this is the Bridges Conference. So this is mathematical art when, uh, when artists are, are bringing their innovations. So for example, this is a pancake printer. So students design their own pancakes and then we can print the, the, the pancakes and then students just eat their, their own mathematics or, or dancing and painting, uh, in which, is a, which is a very important part. So we have lots of exhibitions, amazing speakers, probably, I don't know if you know him, He's, his name is Erne Rubik. So he's the inventor of the Rubik cube. So he was giving some talks for us that how we can uh, use uh, education for this or the developing mandalas from sand and then dancing these, these mandalas from, a, from a mathematical music and mathematical dancing as well or building together the DNA. So very young kids together with Nobel Prize winner, um, scientists are building together and then try to understand that how the DNA is, uh, is, is, is structured. So we also organized this Bridges conference in, in Linz. So it was a very successful conference. And then this year we will have it in Finland, but unfortunately it will be online. And then I will show some of the, the activities. So we have a, a, a meeting in, in Israel, and uh, but it will be online. So we have lots of different kinds of activities and then we are very happy to, to share all of this with, with you. So in September, we organize a conference on the mathematics education in the digital age, which you are very welcome to, to apply. And then there are lots of books and, uh, and activities. So for example, this is a creativity book, which is freely downloadable. And um, what I, I would really encourage you to be part of the STEAM education network. So this is our, one of our website, this open STEAM group. But if you are on Facebook, then I would recommend you to, to, to join our uh, group. It's called GeoGebra Arts and STEAM. And uh, this is a, a very active group. We have more than 8,000 members. And then we are showing lots of mathematical arts in these uh, activities with, with GeoGebra and then with, with many different uh, approaches for this. So if you are interested in this STEAM education and then the ideas and then what we are sharing, I, I would really encourage you to, to sign up for our GeoGebra Arts and STEAM group because um, you can learn a lot, lots of these, these activities as well. So just to, to wrap up, uh, I would really encourage you to be part of the, in this community and then work with us. And then maybe you can visit or study or do research together with us. So hopefully it was uh, some interesting ideas then that I could share with you. Okay. So thank you very much. And then um, I think we have plenty of time for discussion and for questions. And I'm very happy to ask questions. And then if you need um, some more information, you can email me. And then also in the, the Facebook group, GeoGebra Arts and STEAM, you can find many of these uh, resources and activities and so on on, on GeoGebra. Yes. Thank you so much, Professor Saul. As usual, it was very interesting and nice presentation. And we have some of the questions posed by the participants, eight of them, I think. Now I can mm -hmm. see. Uh, so let us uh, respond to some of these. One question is uh, by Santosh Kumar. 
our role as pedagogy in this digital era? Uh, what is the question again? It is how uh, role as pedagogy in this digital era? Uh, so I'm mean, um, asking what is the role of pedagogy? So it's very important. So it's even more complex than, than we had before because uh, in the, the past, what we had, the teacher is uh, standing in front of the class and then tell the class what is available. But now everyone has the, the knowledge in their pocket, in the, the, the phones, and then the knowledge is available. And then also there are so many different uh, resources and then that is available for uh, for teachers and and for for students so then that's why all of them the things what i showed you really need to understand that what it is because it's 100 times more complex pedagogy we need need to apply than um, than uh, one what we one, one what we thought okay another letter state it says from one of the attendees, how was the student's perception and their learning methods? Can we know how the basic knowledge can be taught for this? And I, mean, I think, yeah. You know, so I think what we need to do is trust the teachers and then also trust the, the students. So I think for the, for the, the 21st century, that one, what, what is the, one, what is the, the need is that we need more skills rather than content because content is available on the internet and then and, and so on. And then probably then the knowledge is, is shifting from the, the content that how we solve an equation to, to, to more uh, understanding the skills and then finding the resources and then work, working with, um, with, uh, Win with the skills rather than, than than the knowledge. So I'm I'm not really fan of assessment because we need more skills and creativity rather rather than rather rather than the the, the knowledge that we used to have in in the, the classroom. Then uh, another question from one of the Subhash is Das is asking. How do the responses evaluated in GeoGebra? So then, then there are lots of algorithms in the in the the, the background in in GeoGebra. So, so GeoGebra is more like an exploratory tool. So you can do whatever you want within with GeoGebra. But if you are a teacher and then you want to to evaluate your your work, then uh, GeoGebra runs some algorithms in the in the background. Then there are some tutorials. To, to do this, and uh, you will find it on, on the GeoGebra page. And uh, one question says, how to use an online platform according to present scenario? So for example, now we released GeoGebra Classroom. So then this is an online collaborative environment. So again, if you go to the tutorial, then you can learn all of this and then you can set up your virtual classroom and then work together with then, the students. So it's becoming more easy and easy. It's easier to, to use these online platforms. But one, what we need is, uh, is really experimenting because it's never done before. And then I think we, we need to, to, to work on this. So then that's why I encourage to do research on this topic. And then um, I think this is the future. Uh, another we can take, uh, how much does graph theory play a role in your level? How much there? That graph theory, the subject of graph theory plays a role in your level. Is there so then yeah, so then, then there is uh, some graph theory in, in GeoGebra, but I think uh, GeoGebra is not especially the best tool for, for graph theory. So I think it's a complementary role for, for graph theory. But of course, you can explore basic con uh, concepts, but, um, but um, 
you can find the different kind of things. And then also I, I would suggest to, to explore the materials on GeoGebra and, um, and you can find some graph theory. One uh, Surajit Sanapati is asking how far can STEAM uh, education be helpful for students with special needs? I think then this should be the most helpful for, for students because they, this is where we can really tailor one the, the needs. And then that's what I wanted to emphasize that every student have a different in, interest and different creativity okay. and different uh, background. And, this is the way because one what we have in education that everyone has to do the same but i think on the on the long run every student have to do different things and uh, it's much more difficult for the teachers because they need to be organizers of the classrooms but the, this is the way when then we can personalize teaching and then learning for the, the students. So I think this is a very different, difficult con uh, concept because now everything is standardized. But I think in the future, if you want to, to introduce creativity, then we need to have personalized rather than uh, standardized ways of uh, teaching and learning. Uh, one uh, question, I think it is, uh from Patriot Dev Burma, he says, uh, don't you think that our total dependence on GeoGebra would limit the actual practice or basic knowledge of students? Yeah, but you don't have to, you, yeah, you don't have to depend on, on GeoGebra. So you can use whatever you want. So GeoGebra is one tool, but you can use thousands of other tools. So. So one, one, what we create is a, is a tool. If you like it, use it. If you don't like it, don't use it. So it's, it's your, your choice. Everyone should, uh, you should choose one, whatever they like. Yeah. Moreover, the idea or the use of GeoGebra is to create the concepts on those difficult things that is difficult to explain in the plain whiteboard is easy to visualize using GeoGebra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, many, many times, but sometimes you need to use the, the blackboard, sometimes you need to yeah, use Excel true. or some, sometimes you use something. So GeoGebra yeah. is not, not the magic tool. It's just yeah. one, of, one, of, one of the tools, but we, we try to give as good tool as possible. Right. So I think we responded to almost all questions. And, uh, Anything more from Professor? Yeah, so I'm, I'm very happy to be here. So if I can help and then me, maybe we can collaborate and then we are always looking for good ideas. And one what I recommend you that if you do something and then you think it's good for the community, just please share it. So then that is the, the most important for the future is really sharing that share your ideas. And then rather than just individual lear learners, we need to be a, a community because then that's how we can go further with, 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 with sharing and then contributing. So actually, it is so important, you know, to have new innovative ideas and practices in the classroom to motivate the students, generate more interest among young minds, which is lacking actually. Uh, it is a problem, it's a global problem, I understand. So it is high time we change our uh, way of teaching and integrate some of the technology with our teaching. And mm -hmm. uh, moreover, you have shown like how uh, machine learning and big data and all those are now integrated with GeoGebra. And uh, fortunately, we are also doing a lot of research in AI and machine learning also. Many mm -hmm. of our my scholars are doing in that direction. So I think oh, it will be really interesting to have some collaboration and uh, carry forward this so that you know the mathematics education is developed further. So I think with these words, I'll thank you once again. I thank all the participants for their time. And uh, I hope everyone got benefited 
and then uh, those who are willing to collaborate or maybe communicate with Professor Sol, maybe they can directly find him uh, in his uh, website or they can uh, go through me also. And uh, okay, once again, I thank everyone. And I thank our university community, our vice chancellor leader who initiated this webinar series and allowed us to you know, organize. And then our ICT center, all the people here who are uh, providing mm -hmm. all required support, particularly you know, our system analyst, Surat, Mr. Surat, he has been so helpful and made, made everything easier for us. And uh, once again, thank you so much. Nice to see you after a long time. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okay, Mr. thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. And Bye -bye. Um, all the best for everyone. Thank you.